In one of a series of memorable advertisements for which it has become justly famous, Federal Express, the overnight package delivery service, noted that waiting is frustrating, demoralizing, agonizing, aggravating, annoying, time-consuming, and incredibly expensive. David H. Meister, former professor of Harvard Business School, has identified propositions that explain the psychology of waiting lines that could be used by managers to influence the customer's waiting time experience. Before we discuss the propositions, it is necessary to consider two general laws referred to as Meister's Laws of Services about service encounters and how these are experienced. The first law states that satisfaction is equal to perception minus expectation. This implies that if you expect a certain level of service and perceive the service revealed to be higher, you are a satisfied client. If you perceive the same level as before but expected higher, you are disappointed and consequently a dissatisfied client. The second law states that it's hard to plan catch up ball. This suggests that if the service begins well, it is easy to keep customers satisfied. Conversely, if customers become dissatisfied during the service, it is extremely difficult to turn things around. Now let's look at a few psychologies of waiting lines. The first one is that occupied time feels shorter than unoccupied time. The perception of time with any activity is related with the association that the brain has with it. If people have to wait longer for a service without any association with it, they start focusing on the passage of time which increases the perceived time spent. To reduce this perceived time, it's better to engage the customer while they are waiting for your services. And a good way to do, do the same is by engaging them in certain activities that initiate the service. For example, in Phoenix Market City, Chennai, one of the escalators is very long. So, to engage the persons using the escalator, they have provided a huge mirror up front. People coming down start looking at the mirror and observe themselves, taking photos and selfies which keep them engaged and reduces the perceived time of the escalator ride. The second point is that people just want to get started. Imagine you go to a restaurant and you are not being attended to by any of the waiters. How would this make you feel? The perceived time of waiting for a service reduces if the customers can be included in the service process as they come in. It gives them a message that the customer is being acknowledged by the service provider and their service has started. For example, in Toy Drupa, Bangalore, when the customers come during the peak time and no sitting space is available, they record the customer details and send them to the bar where they can order food, beer and as in and as in when the seats are available, they will get a call as to the vacancy that has been created. Here, Toyt is neither losing customers for lack of available spaces, but rather generating revenues in the customer waiting time. Also, the customers are satisfied as they are being acknowledged and their service has already started even while they are waiting. The third psychology is that anxiety makes waiting time longer. Now, imagine that you are a big fan of Sachin Tendulkar. He is scheduled to play his last test match at the Vankhede Stadium, Mumbai. And you are visiting Mumbai from Delhi during that time. You reached Mumbai one day before the match and went to the stadium directly from the airport to buy tickets as all online tickets have already been sold. The counter is about to be closed and you see two lines, one having 20 people and the other one having 25. And you, being the logical person that you are, join the line of 20 people. Suddenly, the computer that the operator in your line is handling shuts down and the person is not able to start it again. The clock is ticking and the line beside you is getting shorter and shorter. How will this make you feel? Anxious to get to the other line? Each minute that you stand in the queue, your anxiety will keep on increasing. Then suddenly the operator comes out and announces that we have enough tickets. You all will be able to watch Sachin play. We'll be open till 6pm. Now how are you feeling? I can almost see that big smile on your face. Calm customers will usually lead to satisfied customers. Therefore, we need to find ways to remove what your customers must be worrying about. Reducing the anxiety always makes them calm, always increases their level of satisfaction. The fourth point here is that uncertain waits are longer than known and finite waits. Imagine you are hungry and decide to order food home. The person on the other end of the phone tells you that they have a lot of pending orders and they will deliver it as soon as possible. 
you get impatient because you are hungry and also don't know when the food is going to arrive instead of soon if the person had specified that the food will reach you in 45 minutes you would have been more at ease with waiting and less annoyed therefore when there's a certainty and a degree of finiteness about the waiting time you are more mentally prepared to deal with it you know you are helpless and hence accept the circumstances that prevail uncertainty only makes you more jittery and makes things worse than they already are the fifth point is that unexplained waits are longer than explained waits this logic is similar to knowing why your mobile phone has developed a nasty lag instead of just knowing that it has developed a lag when you know the reason for a problem you feel more secure about the outcome at least you have a valid argument as to why the outcome is delayed or in the worst case unfavorable imagine this you're standing in a queue in a bank to get your currency exchanged after the economic reforms unleashed by mr modi on november 8 2016 you stand there patiently but the line hasn't moved an inch for the past hour the teller is nowhere in sight you cannot even go and ask someone with the fear of losing out on your position in the queue how would this make you feel helplessness irritation and frustration would just be the tip of the iceberg you would go to the extent of cursing everyone from the teller to mr modi despite proudly having voted for him in 2014 not an ideal situation is it this is what we all would go through we are all if we are all told the cause of the delay or the wait we take it in our stride consider the difficulty faced by the service provider and also be more accommodative if not all hell breaks loose the sixth point the sixth psychology is that unfair waits are longer than equitable waits an accomplished management science consultant to the fast food industry once reported that customer satisfaction in a certain single queue wendy's restaurant is higher than in many multi queue burger king and mcdonald's restaurants averaging half the queue waiting time as wendy's he believes the wendy's customers prefer the longer queue with guaranteed first come first serve queue discipline to an undisciplined multi line situation with high chance of social injustice the feeling that somebody has successfully cut in front of you causes even more even the most patient customer to become furious great care to be equitable is vital such systems can work well in queuing situations where there is a fifo or a first in first out which is the appropriate rule for queue discipline however in many situations customers may be ranked in order of importance and priorities allocated that way a good example is a walk in medical facility which will frequently break the fifo rule to handle emergency cases that's all folks thank you for your time